First thing I want to do this morning is I want to draw your attention to what happened here Thursday night. We have Monday, Thursday uh, service, and uh, Catherine led that service. Uh, it was uh, well attended, and we had a beautiful um, breaking of the bread and, and the wine together uh, on Monday, Thursday. Very, very meaningful, very, very meaningful. And uh, as you can see, beautifully choreographed. Now, um, as always, I want to start with a painting or two as we look at what we are here about today. As we look at the resurrection of our Lord. And Piero uh, della Francesca was an Italian uh, painter uh, in the early Renaissance, and as you look at this, let me just read a couple of things uh, about this. Uh, notice the realism of Jesus' left leg and foot as he hoists himself out of the tomb. The Christ man is not pictured as an, uh, a being who floats above us, but a real solid human being. The risen Christ has an uncompromising Determined expression, he looks the viewer squarely in the face. What is more, he raises a standard with his right hand, squaring his shoulders as if to lead his followers into battle. So we look at 152 years later, the famous Flemish painter, Peter Paul Rubens, uh, of the Northern Renaissance, and so the figure of Christ here dominates the space. There is nothing uh, otherworldly here but a male human body in all of its beauty. He captures the difference between a living and a dead body. The vigor of the living body of Christ is heightened by Rubens' masterly use of light and shadow. You'll notice how dark darkness and the, the black that is coming into the paintings about 150 years later as they usher in something that is called chiaroscuro, something that Caravaggio began. The dark areas in the paintings are uncannily empty, threatening, but Christ's body pulses with light. The clever contrasts of light and dark were almost certainly inspired by Rubens' encounter in Italy with the works of Carav Caravaggio. The dean of a seminary told a first-year student that he should plan to preach a sermon in chapel the following morning. The student had never preached a sermon before and was nervous and afraid and stayed up all night trying to come up with a message and was unsuccessful. He stood in the pulpit, looked out at his classmates and said, do you know what I'm going to say? And all of them shook their heads no, and he said, neither do I. The service has ended. Go in peace. <laughs> That's not what I'm going to do here today. So don't, don't get your hopes up. Okay, after all, this is Easter Sunday morning. So the dean was not happy, and he went up to the student, and he said, now, wait a minute. That's not what uh, I was looking for. I'm going to give you another chance tomorrow, and you'd better have a sermon. So, again, the student stayed up all night, and again, he couldn't come up with a sermon. The next morning, he stood up in the pulpit and said, do you know what I'm going to say? And, and yes, the students all nodded their heads, yes, we do. And he said, well, then there's no reason for me to tell you. The service <laughs> is over, and go in peace. Well, by this time, the dean was really fuming, and he said, okay, enough of this. I'll give you one more chance. If you don't have a sermon tomorrow, you're going to have to leave the seminary. We're going to, I just don't think this can continue. Well, again, no sermon came. And he stood in the pulpit the next day and he asked, do you know what I'm going to say? And some shook their heads no, and some shook their heads yes. And he said, okay, those who know, tell those who don't know. The service has ended, go in peace. And so the seminary dean walked up to him and put his arm around his shoulders. He said, uh, 
Those who know tell those who don't know. Today, the gospel is proclaimed. And there it was. And here we are. We come to recount the central message of the gospel, the resurrection story, that which gives us hope for newness of life here and now and in the next world. So we recognize that resurrection is more than simply an interesting academic exercise. In every community and in every life, we struggle with both life and death. The beauty of the resurrection is that death is not so much opposed or destroyed as transformed and absorbed into life. And so we celebrate the resurrection story. We are called to live anew the resurrection in our own lives. This means that God is challenging us to face the death within us, the self-centeredness, the apathy, the destructiveness, the cynicism that keep us and others from and allow us to be transformed into life. It also means that we be prepared to bring life to others wherever that may take us through our compassion, our hospitality, through listening, through giving, through friendship and involvement and advocacy. And when we become aware of how our actions bring life or death to others, we find ourselves making different choices. Now, I told you last week that I was going to take you into Bosnia this morning. I, for those of you who weren't here, I served there during the war as a military chaplain with the Canadian Armed Forces. I served with a battle group of 1,500 troops. Now, and before I take you there, I want to take you on a little bit of a journey to give you some idea of what ministry is like for those of us who minister to our personnel in uniform. Of course, Dan Gilroy being a chaplain himself here today. Now, bear with me. Now, this is a chaplain. You have to learn to adapt as chaplains. And so here he is. This is his pulpit, the cockpit of a, a biplane. I'm not sure where this is, but it's a drumhead field service in World War I. World War II, some of these are American chaplains, obviously. And here we see having a Sunday service or a worship service. It's not always on a Sunday that you have them. Here aboard ship, and here's your chaplain here. And he's fashioned an altar right under the guns on the deck of a destroyer. And here you can see people are all in prayer. Here we are somewhere, and you have a, an army padre by the looks of it. Uh, and his altar is the hood of a jeep. And there he is administering the sacrament, and you can see uh, there amongst here, here's someone getting ready to ingest, and another here, they're getting ready to participate and take of the, of the bread by the looks of it. Vietnam in the 60s, another American chaplain. We did have ch Canadian chaplains there, just a couple of them. Uh, but there again, wherever you could find time, in a, in a busy day of operations. And operations every day is the same. There is no end to it, no end, until it is finished. And here's another one in Vietnam. Now here's one in Afghanistan. This again is, is an American chaplain. Um, by the colors, it looks like it's the season of Lent. But notice what, what he has fashioned his altar out of. These are... Uh, humanitarian aid boxes by uh, the Red Crescent, which is the Islamic form of our Red Cross in the, in the Western world. And there, 
And, uh, and here's a fellow here, I think he's doing the music, because now we have electronic music, and so we have lots of hymns to choose from, uh, as long as somebody can sing. Um, and that's always, always a challenge. Now, let me take you deeper into this, and uh, of course, this is just anywhere. I don't know where this is, but here we have, and here he's breaking the host and getting ready to serve. In this instance, it looks like the Eucharist. Now we're going to go to Bosnia. I want to share some of, of my experience that I had there as it relates to Easter Sunday. So here, here's Bosnia, Herzegovina, uh, which is on the, the Dalmatian coast here. Uh, and this is what the former Yugoslavia used to look like. A bit of a history lesson here. Um, but there were a number of republics that had come under the umbrella of the greater Yugoslavia, and they're all pretty much nations of their own these days. And uh, so, and then this pertains more to where I want to take us this morning. Now, I was in a community just outside Sarajevo right here called Visoko, and we had had we had had troops, um, a few troops that had been into in the Muslim enclave of Srebrenica. You'll recall that Srebrenica was where there was a terrible massacre of 8,000 men and boys, Muslim men and boys, at the hands of um, the, the Serb military, unfortunately. I was in Tuzla, okay, I was in Tuzla. And I was part of a road move, a resupply move, where you're taking in uh, food and sustenance and other things for the troops. And I was on a, um, on a JNA, which was a Yugoslavian military base. The British were there. And we were trying to, we had a full company, golf company, which would be about 120 men and all their this mechanized infantry, so they had all their armored personal carriers and everything that they needed. They were waiting for a green light to go into Srebrenica to fly the UN flag because it was considered at that point in 93 uh, a safe haven. It fell probably a year and a half later. Uh, but anyway, so here we go. And so... Golf Company, it was a large base, Golf Company was, was given a part of the base for them to use as uh, a launching area. And this is what they had. This is a, this is a, a MiG jet hangar. And uh, so the company, that is a tarmac that you know, it, it's quite lengthy, and, and, the, and this would be the jet that would find itself taxing down and going into this um, hangar. Now, the one that I visited was similar to this, but not exactly the same. So when I arrived there, I was coming to celebrate Easter Sunday morning, okay? But it wasn't Sunday. It was Monday but you celebrate it anyway. You celebrate it whenever you can. So one of the things that we have to do, you got me on this mic, Michael? Um, one of the things that we have to do as, as chaplains is that you have to learn to improvise no matter where you are. So I'm gonna show you what I did, okay? Are you ready? Okay, good. All right, you're probably wondering why this barrel is here. I've had all manner of, um, I'll try not to knock that cross of flowers over. It's pretty crowded up here today. I've had all manner of people wondering what this was about. They thought perhaps I was going to get in it and come out of the tomb or <laughs> whatever, you know, and they can't, couldn't figure it out. I said, we'll have to come Sunday to figure out what, what I'm doing here. So the first thing that I looked around, because you have to appreciate this hangar 
had not been used in a long time. And it was fairly old, but it was just like this one. It was right into a cliff. And the doors, these I'm presuming swing this way, but these doors just slid, okay? And inside, inside, it was dark. Some person might say as dark as the inside of a cow. It was dark, and, and water was dripping down in the back, and so there was water on the floor, not everywhere, but in, in the corners, a fair amount. And uh, rather, rather imposing. So this was where I was to have my Easter Sunday service in this hangar with what light we could find. So the first thing, I, I looked around, and I said, well, what have I got here anyway? How am I going to do this? So I found uh, a 45-gallon drum, had a larger opening than this, but this, this will suffice. Thank you, Mark. Uh, and, and then I looked for something else. I needed some wood. So I found some. You see where I'm going? You didn't know that was there, did you? <laughs> so I found some wood. do a balancing act here today. Okay, that's, I don't need nails, I don't think. Uh, and then I needed something, because I'm making an altar, in case you're wondering. Okay, um, so I needed something. So one thing that the military is never without is something called hessian. And hessian is, it's like a, a plastic, it's on a huge spool, and you, you use this it's green, hence this, and you use it to, well, around latrines and things like that where you want some privacy, or in all sorts of things. So I've, I got them to cut off a piece of hessian, and I use that as an altar cloth. So this is what this is going to do. Okay. How am I doing? Is that all right? Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Did you see that under there? <laughs> now, what do you think this is? Uh, oh, shower? <laughs> oh, oh well, you're getting close. Sermon, <laughs> hymns, linen, oh boy, I'm going to try to, if this could have, all right, Just bear with me. This is all about improvisation, improvisation, okay? All right, so. You know what that is? Gotta have a Bible. Of course, this is used to, for when you're outdoors in the wind to keep the pages from flying around too much. All right. So far, so good. Now, this is multi purpose because. 
Um, this base comes off and you can hang it in a tent. But there's the cross, much like the one you saw in the photo. Chalice, you have to have a chalice. It's been used many, many times. You could use a little cleaning. Okay, there's the chalice. Of course, you can't have a service without candles. So you have to have candles. Ileana do, there are two of them. Okay. And so what you do is you, you set up your, your service, and this is what I did inside this hanger. I had the chalice, I had the word, and of course, this is full of wafers. We'd use real bread when we could, but most of the time uh, we use wafers. So. And there you had it. And of course, what else do I have in this little bag of goodies? Uh, this, this would have water and wine, okay? And, or juice, depending on your tradition. Um, and that's what we would do. So this is what, this is what I set up in the, in the hangar. And we used cots for pews. What, pe what the men slept on, we brought in enough cots that everybody would come. And there we were. And so, we talked about the brokenness of humanity, and as we saw this, experienced right up close. Now, um, these men were soon to deploy into uh, Srebrenica, where they stayed until they were relieved. Quite a horrific place to be. But we talked about, we talked about the brokenness. And we talked about the brokenness of humanity and how that the resurrection Christ came to bring healing to that breach in relationships and that brokenness of, in humanity. You all remember Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan wrote, wrote a song, and uh, I'm not going to sing it, uh, but, it's, but it's, uh, it's called We Live in a Broken World. And this is what he says. Everything is broken. Broken bottles, broken plates, broken switches, broken gates, broken dishes, broken parts. The streets are filled with broken hearts. Broken words never meant to be spoken. Everything is broken. Broken bodies, broken bones, broken voices on broken phones. Take a deep breath, feel like you're choking. Everything is broken. Broken treaties, broken vows. Broken hands on broken plows. Broken pipes, broken tools. People bending, broken rules. Everything is broken. And that was on his album, Oh Mercy. So today, we celebrate, along with millions, tens of millions of others around the world, the resurrection, the resurrection of Christ, that sacrifice to redeem us from that brokenness, the brokenness of humanity, and the breach of relationships within humankind. And so in the midst of life's darker circumstances, there is light. There is light. And where the temporal things of this world leave the soul meager in yearning, the transforming power of the resurrection brings to one's life purpose and meaning. And beyond what one can find oneself. I'll close with one last 
painting, which I think is the best painting of the resurrection. Rembrandt, the master. But you'll notice here that uh, this, is, this is, whatever your theology may be, this is, uh, when did he do this? In 1635, so we're going back quite a ways. But what is really important here is that in his painting, Christ stands behind the angel, but he is no longer a recognizable human being. Instead, pure light and energy radiate out of the darkness of the tomb, a theological statement rather than a physical one. So here is Rembrandt's depiction. And if you look really closely here, you get just a, a little bit of a face coming through right here. And so perhaps the most famous painter of his time, we see the strong light highlighting the darkness around it. And this is where this chiaroscuro really comes into view. So as we consider what this day means, and as we think of this resurrection, this, that which gives us the light within to be a light the world. Let us remember that the power of the resurrection is a transforming power. Lord, we thank you this day for all that you mean to us and help us to be truly an Easter people where we can be what you need us to be to others that that light and that love may permeate all that we do. In Christ's name we pray.